Compound interest occurs when you gain interest based on the accumulated value at the end of a period rather than your principal value like you would for a simple interest. So what I mean by this is let's say we invest like a dollar into period zero. Well, we're not going to gain any interest in the first year, but on the second interest, we would gain I interest, whatever that interest rate is. And our new principal would end up being one plus our interest rate. Now, instead of just gaining interest in period two based on your initial deposit of one dollar, now you're going to be gaining interest based on your new principal, which is one plus I. So at the second period, you'll have your original one plus I and you'll be multiplying it by the new interest rate. So what you would end up with is one plus I squared if you multiply these out. So when you get to N periods, your new principal is going to be one plus I, your interest rate to the power of N if you're investing just $1. So our formula for accumulation function for compound interest is going to be little a of t is equal to one plus your interest rate all raised to the power of t. So what this means is that every single time that you hint that you hit a new period, your principal or your accumulated value will be multiplied by the interest rate again, and then the whole thing will increase at a much faster rate than simple interest. So to demonstrate this, if we deposit a dollar at 10% compound interest for five years, what is the accumulated value? Well, we're going to get A of five because we're in our fifth year. Uh, we have our initial $1 deposit. We're going to increase it by the interest rate which will be uh, one plus whatever I is, it's 10%, so it's going to be 0 0.10. And then we're going to raise this to the power of five. So this is going to be 1.10 to the power of five, which is how many dollars? Well, we'll check Wolfram Alpha for a bit, or you can check your counting calculator. So 1.10 to the power of five is going to be a dollar and 61 cents. Now, if we were to do this with simple interest, so this is compound, but if we do it with simple interest, we'd be gaining 10% on $1 for five years. So 10% every single year for five years, which would give us a total of $1.50. So we can see that over a five year period with compound interest, we're gaining more money relative to doing it with simple interest. So when we take a look at a graph for compound interest, it is not going to be a linear function. It is going to be an exponential function. This means that if we start with our $1 at year zero, by the time it gets to year 10, we're looking at about uh, probably three, well, a little bit less than $3 at this point. So probably like 275, don't have exact values, but we can take a look at where it is on the graph. And then after 20 years, we're looking at, at this point, probably like $7 if I were to take a look at this. So a 10% interest, interest rate isn't really realistic unless you're getting pretty lucky with moderate risk stocks. Um, but if you were to scale this down, it just take a little bit longer to reach this point. But uh, after 20 years, your money will be like septupling with a 10% increase annual with compound interest. So when we take a look at the amount functions for compound interest, we're really just taking our accumulation function and then we're scaling it by our initial deposit. So whatever our initial deposit is, that's going to be multiplied by the interest rate every single year. So uh, what that means is if you're to put in $100 at 5% uh, or sorry, 10% interest for five years, well, we already know that this is going to be 1.1 to the power of five, which is 1.61. And that would give you a grand total of uh, 100, sorry, $160 and 10 cents, roughly. So we can see that in work uh, compared to what we just saw before when we didn't have any scaling with it, uh, just looking at the accumulation function. So here's an example question. Let's imagine that $3,000 is deposited at 5% effective annual compound interest, and we want to find the balance after four years. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our amount function after four years, our P0, our principal is $3,000, and our one plus I, well, it's going to be one plus 0 0.05 for 5%, and we're raising that to the power of four. 
So we can simplify this a little bit. This is just going to be 1.05 to the power of 4. And then we can use a calculator to figure out what this value is. So that would be 3,000 times 1.05 all raised to the power of 4, which is going to get us $3,646.52 if we round up. Now, if we think about simple interest, so again, this is going to be our compound interest, but if we think about our simple interest, then in this case, we would have a of four is going to be equal to 3,000 times one plus 0 0.5 times four in the brackets, which would just be basically 3,000 times 1.2 which if we do this, we're going to get $3,600. So again, in this case, we're going to see that the compound interest is generating about 46 more dollars than just simple interest. Uh, the lower the effective annual compound interest rate, the lower that difference is going to be. So here is a little bit more complicated of a problem because we're not taking a look at the initial deposit value. Uh, find the rate of compound interest at which one dollar will accumulate to the same amount in three years as it will five percent interest rate okay so what this means is that if we put in one dollar and we're given five percent simple interest rate at what rate do we need our compound interest be to get to that same amount in what whatever amount of time it'd have to be three years so uh, with a 5% simple interest rate, in three years, A of 3 of $1 is going to be 1 plus our interest rate would be 0 0.05 for our simple interest rate. We're doing this over three years, and that would be 1.15. Okay, so basically, we want to hit 1.15 in three years with compound interest. So what interest rate do we need? Well, with compound interest, we'd be looking at A of three. And we know what this is. This is going to be 1.15. This is our final value. And this is going to be one plus I to the power of three. We don't know what our interest rate is. But what we can do in this case is we can take the cubed root of 1.15 to leave us with one plus i. Then we can subtract one from the left side. So this is the cubed root of 1.15 minus one, and that will be our interest rate for compound interest to get the same value as 5% simple interest for three years. So we can put this into a calculator, your favorite one. So 1.15 to the power of one third, then we subtract one. And what we get for I in this case is 0 0.0477. So in other words, we would have to have a 4.7, uh, well, we can round this up to 4.8, a 4.8% compound interest rate to do the same thing that a 5% simple interest rate would do in three years. So if you want to make the same amount of money as simple interest, you don't need as high of a rate of simple interest in compound interest. Now, here is our last problem. This is a little bit more complicated, but it's still quite doable. So we put $300 into an account earning an annual compound interest of 4%. Uh, it is then transferred to a new account after two years where we don't know what the compound interest is. And after four years, we're paid $450. So in the second account, what's the compound rate of interest? Okay, so we're starting with $300. And after two years, we're working with 4% compound interest. So A of two, just putting in our original values, is going to be $300, which is our principal investment. And we're multiplying this by one plus our interest rate of 0 0.04. And we're doing that for two years. So I'm just gonna put this directly into a calculator to see what we're working with. And this will be the value that we have after two years. So 300 times 1.04 to the power of two. And that's going to give us $324.48. So now we're taking this value and we're putting it into a new account. So we can basically think about this as P0 or our second account. So in the second account, we're looking that after four years, we're paid $450. 
Okay, so we're looking for A4. Well, actually we have A4, which is $450. And this is going to be equal to, well, we're starting with $324.48. We're multiplying this by one plus I. We don't know the interest rate, but we know that is going to be raised to the power of four because we're taking a look at four periods. So what this means is that we can divide both sides by 324.48 to get 450 over 324.48 is equal to one plus i to the power of four. So we're gonna take the fourth root of this. So 450 over 324.48, and then we're gonna subtract one, and this is going to give us our interest rate. So back to the calculator that we, we go, 450 divided by 324.48, all raised to the power of one fourth because we're taking the fourth root and then we're subtracting one. So what is the interest rate in the second account? Well, this is going to be 0 0.0852, which means we have roughly an 8.5% compound interest rate in our second account. So the first account was 4%, the second account was 8.5% for four years in order to get $450 out. Okay, that's it for the basics of compound interest. We will be taking a look at other accumulation function problems in the next video.